For the last 43 years, the Trinity Broadcasting Network has been offering 24 hours of faith-based inspirational programming to millions of viewers. Since TBN founder Paul Crouch passed away three years ago, his son Matt and Matt's wife Lori have been tasked to carry on his father's legacy. TBN belongs to God's people. Current plans to expand their audience include a new Hillsong channel starting this month and the launch of a new Hispanic network called Salsa. Well, joining us now are Matt and Laurie Crouch, and it's wonderful to have you with Thank us. You, Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, sir. And, and we're, we're honored because your, your dear mother just passed away, and you chose to, to come. You've been on the schedule, and I um, uh, just thank you for being here. This is our, really our first opportunity to even speak about this whole thing. It was such a shock to our family. Uh, Lori and I were with mom when she took her last breath. She opened her eyes, looked right at Lori, <laughs> which was her way of saying that she loved her more and she loved me, I think. You're uh, taking it the wrong way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's just prettier. There you go. And Didn't, didn't she find Lori for you? She did. She did. Yeah. That was, a, that was an elevator experience in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, we just were with her when she took her elevator ride to heaven, you know, and so... Uh, my mom and Lori had a very special relationship, and it was an honor to be with her when she passed. You met in an elevator? I did. You want to hear <laughs> a, a chunk of it? Sure. I, um, we were at a Kenneth Hagin <laughs> camp meeting back in 1983 and was going up some elevators, and someone I heard someone say, there's Jane Crouch, and I'll tell you how I, uh, the only reason I knew her name. But I, I turned, and I was with my own parents, and I just looked at my mom, and I said, I'll be right back. And as God is my witness, I talk about the nudge that led me to follow her to the elevators of this hotel that I wasn't even staying in. And it had to be the Holy Spirit because I would have never done that. I would have just, I was just traumatized that I was doing that to myself and getting on the elevator with her, you know, and I, and I saw what number she pushed and I pushed the number above and got in the corner and just thought, oh my God, I will never tell anybody that I have ever done this. And about the fifth floor, everybody got out but her and me. And um, she looked at me and she said, do I know you from somewhere? And I said, no, <laughs> you know, but I've seen you and chatted just for a second. Her doors open for her floor. I held the elevator for and I said, I I think this is your floor, you know, and she got out and she turned back around to me and she said, can I ask how old you are? I'd like for you to meet my son. And next thing I knew, I was being drugged <laughs> to meet Matthew. 33 years ago. <laughs> but I felt that same, yeah. that same hand that, that nudged me, that helped me, that drew me for, to our first hello. I felt that last week to our final goodbye to her elevator ride, you know, to the sky. But um, she just, just amazing. And still, you know, people go, well, how do you feel? Is everything okay? No, not everything's okay right now, but it is. It's, it's settled in heaven. She's with the Lord. And what you have just, to also realize, this is the first time we've talked about yeah, it. We, we're we, still struggling for you know, words, you we, know. We don't even know how to say it, except it was a shock. So, yeah. you know, so, forgive us if we're not saying us. something right. Matt because we just, rock you know, today. You're saying everything right. It's, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. As long as it's from your heart, it's right. I'll tell you what. She was really invested in your marriage. She was. Oh, yeah. And, and she went on your honeymoon? We were on, yes. <laughs> Oh, she was kind of in the middle of everything. <laughs> Where did you get this intel, Gordon? I'm we concerned did, about you. We oh. did Talking meet in him. Jerusalem and yeah. you told me. Yeah. We, uh, we went, we, as a part of our honeymoon, we joined a TBN tour back in 1985, and we were, part of it was there. And, and that was a very special part of our, sure. of our honeymoon. You the know? TBN family yeah. was our family. Absolutely. You know, and it is our family, and we grow up, we get married, and we have babies with our family. <laughs> So, <laughs> one of our babies so, is in the studio yeah, with us. So. And it was, yes. So, Matt, what, 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 how, how did you find out about this elevator experience? Uh, my mom called me that afternoon and said, same day, aft, same day, yeah, right and after said, it happened. That was lunchtime. She called me that afternoon and said, After you know, we're done with the taping, come to the booth where we are. I'm going to introduce you to some. I found the most beautiful girl. I went, Oh, God. 
oh, no, you know. Yeah, I felt so sorry and, for him. And literally, I got out of the truck. I was directing that night, the, the big <laughs> convention, and got out. She's standing there. My mom took, <laughs> took, took a, 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 some money in her hand, put it in my hand, yeah. took our hands, put them together like this, and said, now you guys go get to know each other. And it was a finger point. Now you guys, you know. And, and I was like, you do not have to take me out. So <laughs> it's like my mama so was all up there. She for your first date, too? She did. She paid for it, yeah. We walked across the parking lot and ate at a little restaurant, and we sat there together. Uh, about a week later, I got there when you the... gave birth to children? <laughs> yes, she was. She had the door open. All I could see her was her little head stuck. And I'm telling my doctor, you have got to get my mother-in-law out, out of this <laughs> room. Her head. <laughs> She Seriously? was invested. That happened. She was. Yes, she was. Oh, yes. Yeah, she was invested. Oh, yes. How did the light go on for you, Matt? Well, uh, look at her. Yeah, the man. light didn't have to How go on very go bright. On? You know, we so went over there. As soon as you got the money in your hand, you were like. We were gone. We, uh, <laughs> so I, I got the courage to have my mom call her mom a week yeah. later. That was how much courage I had. Did your mom home? And, <laughs> and she answered the phone. I said, hey, uh, this is Matthew. Uh, my mom wants to talk to your mom. And I handed the phone like that. And. My mom invited her to How come. How old were you? Uh, we were, I was 22 I was or 23. You were 21. 21 when uh -huh. we met? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 21. So we found each other again uh, in Florida and spent a little time together and uh, mm -hmm. fell in love and were married about a year and a half later. My son's 21 and my wife is in the audience and I think she's getting some ideas. <laughs> Get on an elevator. Get on it. Get on, Get on an elevator, have cash in your hand, and, That's right. and you can make it happen. You can pick her out. <laughs> what, what do you think is your mother's biggest legacy outside of your marriage? Um, the, the network, uh, her tenacious fighting, uh, you know, kind of in the interior of her. You know, she always said, you know, she always talked like this. Jesus loves you, you know, and I love you. She always crying and everything. But don't let that fool you. She was steel wrapped in velvet, covered in barbed wire. That was my mother. Okay, you, you start messing with what God called my parents to do. You start messing with us. And it was, you know, proverbial hell to pay. Well, she was very much a, yeah. uh, a nature. fighter. Absolutely. And, and also, she was a, f a force that... You didn't mess with God's children. Mm. She was the first one. If you and I and many, many, many people that you and I both know would call her. You call Jan first. If you have get a bad report from a doctor, you want to call Jan first thing. She's not going to wait to say, "Can I pray for you?" She's going to immediately go into war, <laughs> war prayer for you. And um, she, you know, her faith in God, her faith to see miracles, was just who she was. That was just God was going to do a miracle. No matter what, no matter what you see today, there's going to be a miracle. And we're getting so many reports uh, when, when the news of her passing uh, and her transition, uh, you know, I started getting, you know, messages from people like Dave Reaver and, and oh, you know, yeah. that you know, your mother saved my life. Oh, your yeah. mother prayed so for me many. one night that changed my life. Your mother, you know, w we had a friend that lost a son and, and, uh, he, he, in his text to my phone, it was, your mother literally kept me alive during that time. Yeah. So a lot of people uh, would, or, you know, you, when you got to know who she was, she was relentless uh, in regard to protecting the ministry of Trinity, relentless in regard to that. Mm -hmm. you, you, you've got an amazing legacy. And you're already planning some new things for TBN. And Laurie, I understand you're going to have your own show now. <laughs> yes. Matthew, <laughs> he's getting me in a lot of trouble. Mom, um, the, actually, that was the last time we saw yeah. her. Um, she was so excited about um, the hope and grace, before, waking up to Before hope and the grace. stroke, yeah. The before the stroke. So, I'm sorry. Yes, before the stroke. Um, she, we were all in Miami, and uh, she said, I, I'm just loving the Wake Up to Hope and Grace with Joel Osteen and uh, Joseph Prince. And she said, but we've got, uh, Lori, you've got to, to do something. She said, we're missing love. 
She said, we got to do something with love. So she said, you got to get the girls together and started mentioning a couple names. Christine and Kane and Bobby Houston and Victoria Osteen and some so of these. So surprise, things. Bobby. <laughs> <Yeah>. Surprise, Chris. <laughs> no, I've already talked to Brian know, about it. Yeah. But um, they so. Don't know a lot of them do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is in the, yes. It's in the, the early stages, stages, but it's going to happen. Yeah. It'll, it'll be one of the legacies of my mom. And I might pop yeah. in you like know. Barbara Walters for a second every two months. And but but literally, she said, I love hope. I love yeah. grace. We need love. We, we need, need a women's program. And yeah. so we're going we're gonna to get you after that. You should be popping in. You should be a mainstay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. She will. You're the anchor. You're sweet. Yeah. <laughs> we both agree you're on that, so anchor. you're stuck with it. Yeah. And I think that's great. I think yeah. that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you. And it yeah. would be an, uh, a nice legacy piece for her as well, for Jan as well, mm -hmm. because yeah. it, was, it was her concept, her yeah, idea. Yeah, it was. It was. So I can totally rely on that. That's not the first time she's done things to me. So <laughs> she was my biggest cheerleader, my biggest fan, you know. So. What do you have planned for millennials? Um, I know for in our strategy, it's one of the big unsolved puzzles. How, how do we reach them? How do we even get into their lives? Uh, they're, they're not watching television. Yeah. Uh, how, how, do, how do you reach them? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we join up with you. <laughs> well, uh, we, we, we've got to make that a multi-organization yeah. uh, project, uh, Gordon, seriously. And we need to take resources and allocate them together, work this out, get this figured it. out. Okay. So that's one thing. Um, we've launched uh, the Hillsong Channel. Mm -hmm. uh, music is a big piece of that channel, not the entirety of the mm -hmm. channel, but it's a big piece of it. Uh, we have a youth network called Juice that we want to expand. Uh, and we have an entire children's network called Smile uh, that we would love to be the home of Superbook. And we'll you know, get to that and, and, and make sure some of those types of things happens. But uh, you know, at a time when you're not supposed to be doing business you're supposed to be with your family and grieving and, and we got on an airplane this morning we left at 5 45 in the morning uh got here because we believe this was a significant day in our lives and and to come up here and prove to you that we uh we see that working together is the way we're going to solve a lot of those hard issues amen let's do it let's yeah. do it yeah all right